Hey guys, welcome back to another DJI Avata 2 video. And this week we're gonna be covering video settings. And essentially I've just been testing to see what settings work best to help you get the most out of your Avata 2. So I'm still learning this too at the same time. If you're new, hello, my name is Demetrios and I create videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And it's a mix of entertaining and educational content. Subscribe to stay up to date. I know, I know, if you're already subscribed, you probably heard me say this repeatedly, but I gotta do it just in case someone new finds me, they wanna know why videos I make essentially. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's get on with the video and let's dive into the video settings with the Avada 2. So if you have been watching my videos, especially with the DJI Goggles 3 and how to access all the menu systems, what we're gonna do is gonna run through an in-depth on video settings. So we're gonna cover this first. So when you pull up on the 5D button, this brings up the video settings for the Avada 2, the quick menu settings, and we'll jump into the additional ones in a moment. But when you access this, first of all, you have the option in your mode. So are you recording in auto or are you recording in manual mode? Now, if you are recording in auto, ISO and shutter speed are grayed out, so you can't adjust those, but you can adjust exposure value and you can adjust this minus three, plus three, depending on your conditions. If you choose manual modes, exposure value is locked, but then you can choose uh, ISO and shutter speed. The next one here is white balance. You have the option to set it as auto or you can set your white balance to the conditions that you're currently filming in if you want some consistency. After that, you have your aspect ratio, so four by three or 16 by nine. And then you have your quality. So are you shooting in 4K or 2.7K? And your frame rates are, are for 60, 50 and 30 FPS. Or are you shooting in 1080p and you have more frame rate options, so 120, 100, 60, 50 and 30. After this, we have your field of view. So ultra wide, wide or normal. We then have your auto ISO limit, EIS, which essentially is stabilization. So you either have off or rock steady. And again, I'll explain this in the next part of the video. And then finally, we have color profile. So normal or D log M. And that's essentially the quick video settings menu when you pull up on the 5D button. Now there are some additional settings within the main menu not found here. So when we do access the main menu by pulling to the on the left hand side or pulling right on the 5D button, you go to settings and then camera. And then make sure that drone is on to be able to access all these settings. If the, cat, if the drone is not on, you don't have access to everything. Now the first one, the notable thing here is your grid lines. You have the option for an X pattern, a grid, both or none at all. You then have camera view recording. Essentially this is when having the subtitles on the OSD display. So if you are recording to the goggles, do you wanna have all the settings visible or not? Auto record on takeoff. This is a good one to turn on just in case you do pull off a maneuver and then you weren't recording, just set this to on. You then have sharpness and noise reduction. I actually didn't get a chance to test this because I ran out of battery and I'm a bit of a plum as well. But if you wanna know how these affect your image, leave a comment down below and then I can cover this in a separate video or as a short. And then we have anti-flicker as well. And you have auto, 60, 50 or off. Again, I didn't test this and I just left this as auto and I haven't really had an issue. And you guys have probably seen the videos. There hasn't really been much of an issue. Now that was a quick run through for all the video settings for the Avata 2 and what you can adjust. Now let's dive into my findings during the testing and what I actually tested. So one of the first ones here was the frame rate, whether you're using a higher frame rate at 60 frames or a lower one such as 30 frames per second. Since I purchased the Avada 2, most of my testing has been at 4K 60, only to familiarize myself with the drone and to show you other videos and what I needed to test first. Video settings wasn't a priority at the time, so 4K 60 was it. However, when I jumped to 4K 30 or 2.7K 30, I noticed when the lower frame rate that it was a little choppy in the goggles compared to when filming at a higher frame rate. Now my friend Adam, who was my spotter at the time, he was actually watching uh, through live stream on the phone. We actually tested that function, it worked flawlessly. He said he didn't notice anything. Now when playing back the footage, 
I don't really see anything. Personally though, I think 60 frames per second is a lot smoother. And then when fast paced action shots should be filmed at a higher frame rate, it also gives you the option to slow down that footage as well. 50%, again, depending what frame rate and timeline you are using or to edit on. So that's the first thing I notice when shooting at a lower frame rate. Now let's jump into file sizes. This one might be important to most of you. Which option is best in order to not take up so much space, especially if you're someone that likes to keep footage or like myself where you do YouTube and you need the footage to show in for future videos, you wanna keep them to show as an example. 4K60 eats up a lot of space. So I was wondering, can you get away with 2.7K? I think 1080p, the quality isn't there. You do notice the difference. I did test this as well. I only tested uh, 120 frames per second. And yeah, other than the quality, I don't think I'd be using this. I ran out of battery before I could test the others and it just wasn't really necessary if you ask me. So between 4K60 and 4K30, it's a 25% reduction in file size. And from 2.7K60 to 2.7K30 is also a 25% reduction size. 25% is considerable. However, between 4K60 and 2.7K60, it's only an 8% reduction, which I don't think is that significant. And this was based on a one minute clip when I was doing my laps around the park. What this tells me here is the frame rate counts a lot. You're obviously shooting more frames, so it's gonna take up more space. So if you wanted to save space, you would have to lower the frame rate. I don't think shooting at 2.7K60 with a 8% reduction or 10% reduction is significant enough. It could add up the longer videos you have. Personally, I would just stick to 4K60, maximize the quality production possible, and then just buy an SD card. That's what I would do. If you're gonna fill up the internal storage, just buy an SD card. I bought a Lexar here, if I can take it out, there we go. So this is the one I purchased. I bought this actually from DJI when I bought the drone. It was actually cheaper to buy this through them at the time than it was through Amazon. It's a 256 card, there's plenty of space in here. I haven't really had an issue and I also format most before most of my flights. I tend to forget only because I've been so busy trying to do all this YouTube stuff. So yeah, I don't think it's a significant difference uh, to go to 2.7K60, just go 4K60. Uh, unless you're really stringent on space, then yeah, drop to the lower one. Aspect ratio, four by three or 16 by nine. The things to note here is that with four by three is more versatile because not only can you use it for horizontal videos like YouTube, but you can also use them for vertical videos like shorts or Instagram reels. If you've been following me a while, you know that I'm not a fan of vertical video, even though I do it for the sake of, yeah, you know, social media. Personally, when I've been editing these, I would rather edit them as one by one or four by five. At least it will give you a little bit more width than the full 16 by nine vertical space. It just doesn't look good FPV footage. You're supposed to go wide. If you want the versatility, go four by three. If you don't care about posting vertical video, use 16 by nine. The other benefit when using 16 by nine is within the goggles, you actually get a larger picture to see. Whereas four by three, it trims it in a bit and then you have black bars as well on either side but it's pros and cons to both. Now, the other one I tested here is field of view. So ultra wide, wide, and normal. Throughout my videos so far, I've been using ultra wide. The thing to note here is when you are using ultra wide, there is slight curvature on the edges here. Again, I'm fine with that, doesn't bother me. It also looks better and looks like the drone's moving a lot quicker. Wide is slightly punched in, and this also ties in with the stabilization we'll have to explain in a moment. And then you have normal, which is more cropped in and you don't have the warping on the edges. I think go maximum as possible, either wide or ultra wide. And those, those are the ones that look best. This is what you'll be seeing now uh, from the B-roll. But let's talk about the stabilization and how that's, this affects with your field of view. Now, Rocksteady has been great. This is what I've been using so far throughout these YouTube videos. I wanted to test Gyroflow. However, I messed up here and I was filming ultra wide with Rocksteady off, and this didn't record the data I needed. If you wanted to use Gyroflow to record the data, you can only use wide as a field of view. So that being said, I did film, test this, this weekend just gone with my friend Abe on a moped. So this will be in the following video. So if you wanna see that video for Rocksteady versus Gyroflow, 
hit the subscribe button and we'll cover that in that video. So I messed up, but I'm making up for it with next week's video. If we have a dedicated video to compare whether Rocksteady is good or Gyroflow. But that being said, I prefer ultra wide Rocksteady on. So far, it looks good, but I can't wait to see what we do next week. Now the next one here is your color profile. Normal, the log M, you got two options. Normal looks great. Most of the first battery that I was doing my testing with all the different options was using the normal color profile just to see how it was. No complaints. So if you're someone that just wants to record and then put onto social media, I think you'll be fine with normal. However, if you want more dynamic range, you want more flexibility to color grade your footage, D-Log M is the way to go. This is how I've been recording most of my videos. And you can either watch my video up here on color grading and that will explain that. And if you don't want to save time on your workflow, I actually created a set of LUTs as well, which will be linked in the description box down below. So the way you just do is double tap and then that's it. Your footage is graded. No need to worry about converting from D-Log to Rec. 709 and then coloring it. I've taken care of that for you. Now, the other things that I find handy with the video settings is I don't really use grid lines because I find them dis distracting. However, if I was using using the drone for something specific and I needed to nail my framing, I would use grid lines just as I am doing now with my YouTube video. I can see the grid lines and make sure I'm centered in the frame. However, with FPV, you may not want to have this, especially if you're a beginner and you've never flown FPV before. They could be very distracting. Just turn those off. The one I would turn on is the center point though. The center point is very handy, especially if you're trying to make your first gap, at least it'll help guide you, put that point in the middle of the hole for you to go through. The other thing here is recording where to the drone or the goggles. I would set this to both because you'd rather have the footage for both just in case something happened to this drone and you crashed or you lost it and you won't be able to get it back or your SD card back, at least you have footage in your goggles. So set this to both and leave it and you're fine. Also, I know I do this for the sake of the YouTube videos to show you is that recording with the OSD uh, information on there, you can turn this on and off. So if you wanted to reuse this footage for whatever purpose and you didn't want the OSD off, you can just turn off the video uh, recording or if you want them on, keep them on depending on what you're using the footage. Now, as for my recommended or favorite settings thus far, it would be 4K60 with Rocksteady on ultra wide D log M. That's what I've been using and I've been very happy with that. And I also use an ND filter when necessary. So if it's a bright sunny day, I'll use the ND32. If it's low light, maybe I'm filming a, a sunset, I would use the ND8. I will put a little cheat sheet as part of my community post when I get round to it. So keep an eye out for that and I'll link it with the video. Hopefully it will come out at the same time but these are the set of ND filters you get from DJI. So these ones are here, you only get three of them. I actually haven't checked if there's any third party ones. If they do, I'll put it on screen now. I also use my own LUTs. So when I am grading my footage, in order to save time on my workflow, that's why I've created them. I literally just double tap, uh, I'd apply this LUT and that's it. My footage is colored and I don't need to worry about it. It saves me a lot of time. It will save you a lot of time as well. The other reason I know 4K60 takes up a lot of storage as I mentioned earlier. However, having the option to be able to slow down that footage by 50% because I work off a 30 FPS timeline, it's nice to have, it can make things more cinematic. It can add more dynamic, dynamism, is that how you say it? Dynamism to footage. Then yeah, that's why I record in 4K60. I think it looked cool as well. I'm still playing around with it. So if there's anything you want to learn about the DJI Avada 2, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know what drone you're flying. Is the DJI Avada 2 on your shortlist? Subscribe for more videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And YouTube recommends this video here. And I'm gonna ask this question again, if you've made it to the end of this video. Is this the best hybrid FPV drone?